Okay, well, as you can see, it's a, it's a robot. The interesting thing about it is that we can write what we call safety properties. One right. of the safety properties that we wrote on it is that the robot should stop whenever it finds an obstacle. So these are the kind of things that if, I'm, if, I, if I work with you, yep. I will be building and embedded into my system. Those are rules of safety. And this is an example of how you've embedded into this, this robot on the moon. Yeah, to scale the moon, but you can take it in. Three, two, one. Hello, IPXers. We're at Embedded World 2025. We're with a new company we haven't met before, Jose from Adacor. Tell us about the world that design engineers faced if you didn't exist. Yeah, in a few words, I think it would be a much less safe, a much less secure world. So uh, I don't know if you know, but we work, we work in the aerospace industry, defense and all that. So what we, our main goal is to help people develop safety critical, critical software. This right. software that shouldn't fail. Right. So we help them build things that we, you can trust. You can fly in your plane and be sure that the plane will behave as expected. So that's right. our goal in life, right. to make so it safer. If you didn't exist, what, what are the processes that they have to go through to create critically safe? And then we'll talk how you make that life better for them. Yeah. So when you develop this kind of software, you have a lot of uh, verification of the code that you need to do. And it's, it's strictly speaking, you spend more time verifying that your code does what it, it should do than writing it down. I mean, writing the code is relatively short and quick, but making sure that it does what it should do is a very long process of testing, documenting, reading, Rereading, you have all, some people looking at what you wrote, checking whether it was right or wrong. Right. And uh, where we come to help is that first we uh, we use languages that are by design uh, easier to verify. You you can't do whatever you want. The language itself restricts uh, yourself to do some things, some safe things. If I'm, if I'm doing my verification at the moment without you. Yes. How do I integrate you into my system, into my process on top of the job that I'm doing now? Or does it have to be a new project that they're starting? No, no, everything. I mean, our tooling is very easily, easily adapted to any workflow. So just talk us through how that works. If I'm trying to do critically safe software, I haven't come across you before. But I'm, I'm listening to you talk yep. in this interview. Tell us about how that integration works. Yeah, uh, one of the things in our tooling, for example, is that all our tools are command line tools. You can use them from uh, IDEs, but they, they all are command line tools so that they, they are very easily integrated into any workflow scripts. You create new scripts and you add uh, our tooling to your scripts. And that's uh, one of the easier way to, to integrate uh, and also in the, your IDs, we develop plugins to existing IDs so that you can integrate very easily in your day-to-day -day work process. Excellent. We love a toy. Talk us through what's going on here. Okay, well, as you can see, it's a, it's a robot and uh, it's written in Ada and Spark. And I think that the interesting thing about it is that we can write what we call safety properties. One right. of the safety properties that we wrote on it is that the robot should stop whenever it finds an obstacle. So we define a safety dis distance. Yep. And whenever it reaches that uh, distance, it should stop. Right. So these are the kind of things that if, I'm, if, I, if I work with you, yep. I will be building and embedded into my system. Those are rules of safety. And this is an example of how you've embedded into this, this robot on the moon. Yeah to scale the moon, but you can take it any, anywhere you want. Right. So how, where, where, where is it stopping and how do I know that that's doing its job? So it's, it's moving randomly. It yep. stops from time to time, but you would know it's doing its job whenever it reaches 30 centimeter from any of the walls. Oh, I see. That's what it's doing. Yeah, that's, that's what... what it's doing. It keeps walking. Right. Whenever it gets up to 30 centimeter of the walls, it stops. Right. And the good thing is that, I mean, here you can see it in action, but with our tooling you can formally prove before even running the code that it will do as, as you wish. Yes. And it will always stop 
before reaching the uh, the wall. Right, so it's pre-tested, you knew that it was going to do it, it's, and then when you've embedded it, by the way, it's not the moon, it's Mars. Yeah. Sorry, I've not been to either Mars or moon, so I couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> but it is actually Mars. We're on Mars. Okay, good. Should we look at something else over here? Yes. Okay, Jose, tell us about what's going on with this demo. So here it's the same thing as you saw before, the robot. Yep. But in this case, we are running the same, exactly the same code on a simulator. We are simulating the robot. We are simulating. We are simulating the landscape so that we yep. can try. We can check whether it's dying, is doing its job yep. in a simulated environment. Yeah. So there, when I thought we were on the moon, but we we're actually on Mars, that was where we were actually seeing the safety, critical safety software working. Right. And you're actually seeing it working. But yep. you talked about you would be doing simulations beforehand. So what this is showing is the actual simulation yep. before it goes into the physical object exactly. and it's doing its job. So this is your simulation environment yes. to show that your software would be safe. Yeah, exactly. Very good, very good. And we have, well, just as a side note, this is a mixed language uh, environment where the code that we saw in the robot is written in Ada Spark, but the simulation part is, is written in Rust. And we can show the same thing. We can show interaction between the two languages the two programming languages. Right, excellent. So again, making life very easy though. Yes. So, so, so how, does, how does this kind of simulation get built in, in that way? What's the, let's just go through the process because we saw it in real life. How does that actually work for a design engineer? What, what, just, just, just go through the process, what they have to go through to create the simulation before they go into the real world. Just go through that process. Yeah, yeah. So actually the way it works, we first started with the code that goes into the robot. So we did sign all the interface into the hardware and, and the, all the logic of the robot. Then we decided that we wanted to have a simulated environment. So we defined an abstraction layer on top of the hardware. And uh, below that, we had two different implementations, the one that goes on top of the robot and the one that interfaces with this simulation environment. Right. So that's how it works. Yeah. So I think that's quite important, isn't it? Because we're talking about critical, critically safe environments. Yeah. So when you're doing that, you have to test, you have to test the software, you have to go through the verification, then you have to test it again, then you have to test, test it again, and you have to go through it again, and it just takes time and time and time and time. What you're saying is that you have actually have an infrastructure that you've worked through that you just imp, you, you you just get, and you already have all the all the infrastructure that understands the process yep. by which you go about building a critically safe yeah. software environment. And it simplifies testing, uh, it uh, makes it faster, yep. easier. Okay, so if I'm looking to do a critically safe, safe software, uh, just summarize for us what we've learned in, this, in, our, in our five minute chat and why a design engineer should come and talk to you uh, for their next project or indeed their legacy project that you can help them with. Yeah, sure. So uh, we've talked about how to, defi to define on the right safety clear out software. So you can come to visit us at the booth 4148 <laughs> so that I can show you. 4148. Yeah, clear. So if you, if, you want to, if you want to learn more about how to develop safety clear out software, how to verify that code, um, or even just to look at the, our robot, how it it works and uh, check that really doesn't crash into the walls, come see us. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job. Excellent.